The world of the late Cretaceous could only be described as unique and amazing. The flora was experiencing unprecedented diversification, and the fauna of the time showed never-before-seen levels of complexity and ability. In the skies of the late Cretaceous, a new family of pterosaurs took flight. The Asdarkids, from what we know of them, were powerful, elegant, and intimidating animals. The largest would have been as heavy as a male grizzly bear, with a frame like a giraffe's. These pterosaurs were very good long-distance flyers, and adept terrestrial hunters able to cover continents in flight and run over 22 miles per hour on land. They were dominant members of their ecosystems, but could they survive on the Earth today? If so, how would they affect the world's ecosystems and interact with humanity? Before we talk about their interactions with ecosystems, we should address how the environment would affect them. Pterosaurs were endothermic, which means they could tolerate cold better than modern reptiles. However, their anatomy with large membranous wings, on top of being adapted to the environment of the late Cretaceous which was much warmer than today, means they would not be able to handle very cold temperature. And in terms of year-round range, they would be limited to a certain distance from the equator, or generally warmer environments like Australia. However, their high mobility means that their range would change throughout the year. As the northern hemisphere warmed in the summer, their range would extend north and retract in the south. The same effect in reverse would enact as the south warmed during its summer. The models which have been done of their flying abilities used modern atmospheric pressure, meaning what we know about their flight capabilities matches today's atmosphere. A big difference is that today's atmosphere has significantly lower oxygen levels than the later Cretaceous. However, the pterosaur's flight muscles were thought to be anaerobic, meaning they would be able to function as well in this atmosphere. Also, they had very efficient respiratory systems, so assuming they could oxygenate well under the modern atmosphere is reasonable. Since it seems they would be able to survive under modern conditions, what would be their effect on the environment? The giant Asdarkids lived a lifestyle most like modern storks. They would have spent most of their time on the ground and only taken flight to escape threats and travel significant distances. They were active predators, and while on the ground they would have killed and eaten anything small enough to swallow whole, which given the size of their heads and necks, would have been quite a lot of things. They also, if ever given the opportunity, would have consumed carrion from larger creatures the maximum they could probably eat and still be effective flyers, or even capable of flight, would be 50 to 100 pounds. Although 100 pounds is probably simply too much food for them to consume at once even if they were able to bear the weight. Since the flight capabilities of giant Ajdarkids would have allowed them to spread across the globe, we'll look at their effect on our modern ecosystems by continent. North America is home to a host of medium to large animals. Brown bears, pronghorn, elk, a number of smaller deer species, turkeys, wolves, moose, mountain lions, American alligators, raccoons, badgers, skunks and coyotes are all significant players. Coyotes, raccoons, badgers, turkeys and skunks are all well within the size range to be eaten by a giant as dark kid. Juvenile whitetail, blacktail, and mule deer and even young elk and moose would also be possible prey. Wolves and brown bears would be the main competition in retrieving carrion. If the wolves were in small enough numbers, they could be easily killed by a large Asdar kid. Brown bears however would be more of a threat averaging a similar size or larger, with some individual brown bears seriously outweighing any large Asdar kid. However, the pterosaurs would probably be able to use an advantage of their frame to negate this issue. In North America, the tallest animal is a moose, which can get up to 7 feet tall. A 15-foot tall Asdarkid would appear far larger than any North American animal. If they were to spread their wings while standing they would appear even larger, giving them a serious intimidation factor. Modern humans can run lions off of their kills simply by walking towards them, as this projects confidence in their ability to fight off the lions and most wild animals are not intelligent enough to determine the abilities of a species they are not heavily experienced with. So giant as darkids would at least initially be able to use intimidation tactics very efficiently, possibly running grizzly bears, wolves, and American alligators off of carrion. 
The South has a somewhat different environment to the rest of the continent. Not only are there large swamps, but an invasive species, Suscrofa, or the wild hog, is very prevalent here. This species has a very wide size range, and the adults could be too large for Asdar kids to efficiently prey on. However, wild boars are known for having large and repeated batches of offspring, and these would be a great food source for the giant pterosaurs who would be able to easily swallow many young ones whole. Adult boar can be very aggressive if they are forced to be, but generally flee when they first encounter danger. And given the previously mentioned intimidation factor, it is very unlikely they would fight back let alone be successful. Speaking of the swamps, while Asdar kids probably did not spend much time in swamps and wetlands since it would make it more difficult not only for them to take off but to see threats. They could have ventured in from time to time and the swamps of the American South would provide a number of prey items. The American alligator though could be an issue for these animals. The intimidation tactics may not be effective on them. Not only because of the obfuscation of the perceived size of the pterosaurs by muddy waters and brush, but also American alligators will often go to bite at something if they are startled. This could do serious damage to a giant as Darkid. However, this would only be an issue in deep enough water, which the pterosaurs would probably avoid. Also, American alligators are not very aggressive in the grand scheme of crocodilians, so dangerous encounters would be uncommon. Asdarkids could probably be successful in the southern half of North America, probably expanding their range north in the summer. They could feed on the host of small and juvenile animals, and take whatever carrion was present. They may dramatically reduce the population of coyotes both through direct predation and taking their food. How agile the pterosaurs are would change this, but it's also possible turkeys and deer would suffer heavy predation too. Moving south, the continent of South America may have the most diversity on the planet thanks to the Amazon. And naming the host of animals across the continent would be an entire video series in itself. The interior of the Amazon itself could pose some problems. The thickness of the forest would make it very difficult for it to land and take off. That said, on the banks of rivers and on islands in the middle of the river, it would have plenty of open space to land and take off. Small and medium-sized animals like capybaras, various crocodilians, snakes, turtles, and anything else on the banks or in shallow water could fall prey. The savannas and open plains of South America would provide much more space for Asdar kids, and there are some animal species they could prey upon. Llama relatives like guanaco, armadillos, and peccaries, as well as predators like the maned wolf. In South America the largest competition they would face would be jaguars, weighing 220 to 270 pounds, followed by mountain lions weighing 100 to 200 pounds, but their larger size and intimidation tactics would probably minimize these threats. The Andes Mountains would provide an interesting ecosystem with herds of guanaco and relatives and mountain lions as the main predators. These mountains may have less prey available than other ecosystems, but closer to the equator this wouldn't be that significant. Also, the mountains would provide thermal drafts, and as they help modern birds, they would help Asdar kids soar. This would allow them to expend less energy while searching for carrion and prey, and in many cases, it would make takeoff much easier. Finally, the west coast may provide a unique opportunity having a mix of the helpful drafts of the oceans and mountains, and possibly providing lots of available prey in the form of juvenile seals, penguins of any age, and stranded sea life. This, if there were consistent prey, may be some of the easiest living on the planet. Large heavy seals could injure them, but their mobility would minimize this threat. Next we'll head west. Australia has a very unique environment, the main fauna including kangaroos and their relatives, koalas, echidnas, wombats, dingoes, emus, saltwater and freshwater crocodiles, and more. One thing you'll notice is that even the adults of almost all of these species are small enough to fall prey to giant Asdar kids. Also, the very open environment and terrain of the continent would be very friendly to the Asdar kids, making it very hard for prey to hide and allowing the pterosaurs to maximize their strengths in mobility. In Australia, they would face two main threats. 
The first are saltwater crocodiles. These giant reptiles can reach up to 3,000 pounds or 1.5 tons, and at this size are the largest crocodilians and reptiles in the world. While the frame and intimidation abilities of giant Ozdarkids could ward off attacks from saltwater crocodiles, they are apex predators in their ecosystems and may in many cases attack the pterosaurs when they are near the water. The second threat would be from an invasive species, camels. Australia has a very large feral camel population. Individuals of the invasive species can reach up to 1,500 pounds and often travel in herds. If a Quetzalcoatlus or other giant Asdarkid were attempting to predate young camels, they may be attacked by the herd and stomped to death. However, these threats would not be a serious hindrance, and Australia would be a very viable environment for them. The low prey density in the interior may mean that they would stick to the wetter portions on the edges of the continent, but this would still provide ample viable habitat. To the north, the Eurasian continent shares a lot of fauna with North America. The northern and central steppes and woodlands of Asia could be viable habitat for the giant pterosaurs. However, this would only be a seasonal environment for them because of the rather severe winters similar to the northern half of North America. The wildlife in much of these areas is similar to North America, but with some interesting additions like leopards and saiga antelope, the Himalayas and the other mountainous regions would be similar to the Andes, except it would be colder, being farther from the equator and often higher. Where and when it is warm enough, it may be a viable habitat. Most of East Asia has been converted to agricultural land, while there could be viable habitat here. The near-constant conflicts with people would probably make living here very difficult. A similar issue presents itself in Europe, with most of the area being developed or heavily used by humans, leaving only insufficient patches of nature. The Indian subcontinent is pretty different from the rest of Eurasia, with notably different flora and fauna as well as a unique climate. The herbivores include the Indian rhinoceros, Indian elephant, the gore, water buffalo, wild equids, and countless species of caprines, deer, and antelope. The predators include tigers, gray wolves and other canine species, the striped hyena, leopards, mustelids, a number of crocodilians, monitor lizards, and snakes and small, isolated populations of lions. This area is heavily populated, but in the nature preserves and areas with less people, the presence of megafauna, as well as the incredible diversity of small animals, would provide ample food sources. Also, the small size of the predators barring the tiger means they would not face lots of serious threats. Also, their strange appearance compared to the animals of the area combined with their large size means their intimidation tactics would be pretty effective. This would be a viable environment for them, as they would be able to handle the threats of the environment well and take advantage of the resources. The final continent we'll look at is Africa. This continent, specifically the savanna, may have the most competitive ecosystem on the planet. There are plenty of species, but the biggest players are elephants, lions, rhinos, hippopotamus, leopards, hyena, wild dogs, buffalo, zebra, crocodiles, giraffe, and countless species of antelope. The countless number of smaller animals would provide an abundant source of food. The large numbers of megafauna too, similar to the Indian subcontinent, could provide another great food source via carrion. However, Asdarkids would face serious issues here. The height of these pterosaurs has often been compared to giraffes, and unlike any other continent, there is an animal that appears as large as them present. And worse, the top predator of this ecosystem is familiar with hunting them. Also, the highly competitive nature of this ecosystem means that the predators are used to clashes with large groups of other animals. This combined with the comparative ineffectiveness of their intimidation tactics mean that this continent would be the most dangerous for them. They would not be able to take carrion often, and would be in danger whenever they were on the ground. Now this is a lifestyle which they can live, as this is how they lived in the late Cretaceous. They would just be less dominant than in other continents. The Sahara Desert to the north would not be a good habitat due to the low prey density, 
and the blistering heat could be detrimental. The Congo would be less viable than the savanna, due to the thickness of the forests, although they would have less threats than the savanna, so on the edges where the forest thins, and in more open areas and clearings they could land and feed. Finally, Madagascar would be a phenomenal environment for them. First, the temperature would fall well within their range of tolerance. Second, most of Madagascar does not have thick forests and is relatively open. And third, every single animal species on Madagascar, save Nile crocodiles, would be small enough to be prey. The only threat would be Nile crocodiles, but these are rare anyways, so their dominion would be almost entirely unchallenged. Finally, giant Asdarkid's interactions with humans would be interesting. The previously mentioned intimidation factor would work against them in this case, nobody wants a giant death store close by. Initially they would not have any government protection, but the sudden appearance of animals who were thought to have gone extinct 66 million years ago would probably warrant protections, as it did in the case of the coelacanth. In countries and areas though that either would not pass protective regulations or could not enforce them, they would probably be hunted heavily. They could be hunted for many reasons, they would certainly become massive trophies. Their perceived or real threat also would lead many to try and clear them out of their area, and they could pose a very real threat, as children fall well into the size range of their possible prey. Another factor would be religion. There are countless religions across the planet, and the beliefs in some could lead to individuals or groups believing that the Azdarkids are evil, and should be vanquished. Although it is possible that some groups, specifically uncontacted tribes, may come to revere and even worship them, their large size and flight capabilities, as well as their very strange appearance, would make them remarkable creatures to witness. If you have any thoughts leave them in the comments below. Have a good day everyone.